and then part b. Show that when t is greater than 3, uh, x is given by, and so we now have this different displacement model kicking in. You see I sort of wrote down, where is it, uh, right here. This is the displacement model that uh, works for the first three seconds, but it gets replaced by this dramatically more complicated uh, displacement model because I now have to take into effect not just this constant frictional force, but also this reverse thrust which is proportional to the square of the velocity. This is our sort of resistive motion type situation. So this is going to be my destination. This is where I want to go. So how do I get there? Well, I'm going to go back and write down, let's see here, part B. I'm going to go back to the idea of saying when I defined um, from naught to 3 right here, when I defined my uh, my force equation here, that just came from, you can see just on this left hand side, there's a constant frictional force and that's it, right? But now I can have, uh, have in addition to this, the reverse thrust. So in addition to minus 2m, I'm also going to have minus 1 over 10,000 mv squared. So the mass is there as another constant and it's also slowing me down. It's also a retarding force, so it will also be negative. So I'm going to make a very similar argument to what I did here, except um, in addition to this minus to m, there will also be this minus uh, 1 over 10,000 mv squared. Okay, so let's write that down. For, whoopsie daisy, for t is greater than 3, what am I going to get? Well, I'll have um, the force, which is mass times acceleration, that's going to be, we've got the constant frictional force there from the brakes, and then we also have the minus uh, 1 over 10,000 mv squared and that comes from the reverse thrust. So just like I did before I'm going to divide both sides by the mass and that gives me an acceleration equation minus 2 minus I'm going to pop that v squared up on the numerator like so. Okay now this is good. Um, I've made some progress. I've got, you know, this is this is going to be true for t is greater than 3, um, whereas my previous model sort of stops between 0 and 3 because that's the only place where the brakes are going. And now I look at what I'm trying to get to, right? x equals, and then I have all of these numbers in here. Now some of this I hope looks familiar. For example, the 207 is clearly going to come from this displacement that we got in the previous part, part a. Um, that 66 is also going to come from this velocity equals 66, so we're going to substitute that in shortly, but we're not there yet, right? What I need here, if I have a look closely at this equation, it's a displacement equation in terms of velocity. There's, there's no, more in, no more time, right? Did you notice in part A, we were looking at you know, our equations for velocity and displacement were all time equations, so we integrated with respect to t, but here time seems to have disappeared. Um, well, this is a, a model that's not in terms of time. So therefore, I need to think about, um, just like I did at this point here, you can see I said, oh, I'm going to integrate with respect to t. So I was thinking of this really as um, dv on dt. That's what I was really doing. But is dv on dt going to be the most useful um, expression for acceleration that will help me get to here? And the answer is, of course not, because it's on dt, so it would be in terms of t if I did any integration with it. I need something which is in terms of velocity. There's the, um, there's the variable there. So which of the forms is going to be most useful to me? Uh, maybe you're already working it out, you've sort of planned it out in your head. The most helpful form, if I want to get um, displacement in terms of, which is x, in terms of velocity, is going to be v dv on dx. Uh, this is acceleration in terms of velocity, and then I have everything over here on the right hand side unchanged. Okay, now as we've um, done before, what I want to do now is I just want to kind of separate out my variables, my v's and my x's, and then I'm just going to integrate as, um, in as straightforward a way as I can. So you can see over on the uh, left hand side, I've got this extra v there, so I'm going to deal with that by dividing everything through by v, that gives me minus 2 on v, minus v on 10,000. Uh, and then from here, what I want to do is uh, get everything on the right hand side into a single expression because I'm going to need to divide it through uh, onto the other side with the dv and that dx on the left hand side is going to go onto the right hand side. Okay, so uh, let me see if I can get this straight. Uh, still got dv on dx on the left hand side. 
And then when I put these two fractions together and get a common denominator, uh, number one, I'm just gonna take that minus sign out the front because it's a common factor. And I'm gonna be on top of 10,000 V. So therefore, it looks to me like I'm gonna get 20,000 multiplying through by 10,000. And then I'm going to get a V squared on the right because I'm multiplying through by V. So all of that is divided through by 10,000 V. Make sure I've got the right number of zeros there. Okay. From here, as promised, I'm gonna do my separation of variables because I've just got everything nice and neat as a fraction. So I'm gonna uh, divide through by this or multiply by its reciprocal. So what does that leave me with? I'm gonna have 10,000 V on uh, 20,000 plus V squared. And then the DV, I'm happy to leave on the left-hand side because everything is in terms of V over there. And then I've still got this minus sign and I'm multiplying through by DX. Uh, I know this is a little bit sneaky because um, you can see what I'm doing is I'm treating the DV and the X um, just like a regular fraction. In this context, I can, but you need to remember there's actually a limiting process going on underneath here, um, just like there is in chain rule. So you have to be mindful of the fact that this trick doesn't always work. But in this context with sort of like related rates of change, it is totally fine. Okay, now just before I go through and integrate everything, you might notice over here on the left-hand side, um, you've got something where you've got a, a V function up the top and a V squared function down the bottom. This is going to integrate up into a log, but there's one more thing I can do to make this a bit easier for myself, which is to try and get um, the numerator looking exactly like the derivative of the denominator, getting that F dash on F situation that we've seen so many times before. Now, if this is F, if that F of V is the denominator, then F F dash V is just gonna be, well, don't worry about the 20,000, it's a constant, differentiates away. This V squared should differentiate into two V. Now, thankfully, I don't have to do that much to turn this into two V, I just have to take out a factor that's appropriate. In this case, it's 5,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that here in this step. If I leave that as a two, and then I'm gonna put the 5,000 out the front like so, now I am ready to integrate. And so that 5,000 um, doesn't need to be part of the, uh, of the integration process. So I'm gonna move that over there. I'll integrate here and then I'll integrate here. So you can see I am now set up and ready to go. What am I gonna get? Well, left-hand side gives me something I was hoping for. You've got the 5,000, then there's the log of 20,000 plus V squared. Before I even touch the right-hand side, I'm just gonna go back to the question and you can see Number one, we've got the 5,000. Number two, we've got the log. Number three, we've got this 20,000 plus V squared. Very, very promising, okay? Um, that's good. What am I gonna get um, with the rest of this? Well, um, that looks like it's gonna be minus X plus, gee, what constant am I up to? Um, I got up to constant two up there, so it looks like I'm gonna be up to constant three now. So more integrals than you can shake a stick at. Okay, constant three is there. Um, now what I wanna do is try and get this in a form that makes it easy for me to work out uh, number one, I uh, displacement as a function of velocity because that was the whole point of the question. And number two, I also need to evaluate this constant. So I'm just gonna add X to both sides and then I'm going to leave that C3 over there and then I'm going to subtract this awkward log term that you can see over here on the left-hand side. I'm gonna subtract that from both sides. And there we go. Now, what have I got at this point? Well, um, I know that this situation starts from um, after t. In fact, I should really say that includes, well, it sort of includes three because that's when the brakes come, uh, sorry, the reverse thrust comes in, but the question didn't include the boundary, but that's, I think, okay. I know what happens at time three, my um, initial condition, even though it's time three, initial condition for when the reverse thrust first kicks in. So I'm gonna say, uh, when t equals three, I've got those values for x and v that I determined in part a. So that was x equals 207, and my velocity was 66. We already knew we were gonna have to substitute these in just by looking at what the question for part b, uh, what the model looked like. So therefore, let me go and do the substitution. I get, let's see, 207 on the left-hand side. Um, C3 is what I'm trying to evaluate, and then minus 5,000 log, and then does this look familiar? 20,000 plus 66 squared. So there's a subtraction there. So you can see, oops, let's go right back to the question. There's that 20,000 plus 66 squared, which has emerged. And um, it's also tucked inside this 5,000 log 
etc. Okay, so therefore from here I'm just going to add that awkward log term to both sides. It's 207 plus everything you can see here. Okay, excellent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back substitute constant three back into this expression or this equation rather for displacement and then I'm pretty much there, right? X equals uh, C3 which we've just determined is this constant, so it's that. And then you're going to subtract this term over here, which is what we got from the original integration. So that's equal to 207 uh, plus, and then you can see there's this 5,000, which is a common factor from here and here. And then you've got these logs being subtracted. See, there's a subtraction there. Subtract this log from, or oh, sorry, subtract this log from that log. But if you think back to your logarithm laws, when you subtract logs which have the same base, and in this case, it's base E, um, you can divide the two things inside the log. So therefore, I get the log here, and then, as was required by the question, here's the 20,000 plus 66 squared, and then there's the 20,000 plus the V squared, and there you have it. X on the left hand side, displacement as a function of velocity. Uh, and you can see the, the 207 in exactly the right spot and all the rest of it. Okay, as required.